it's already selling, so don't hesitate to contact HQ and get your order placed. In the meantime, um, the Guild has been holding these amazing webinar sessions. Um, this one follows on from the Guild conference and it gives an opportunity for members to keep in touch with one another and see what's going out in the world of, um, in our industry of pipes. And it's my absolute pleasure to introduce two very proactive Guild members presenting today. We've got Radius Systems and Amiblue. I thank both of these companies for not only generously supporting the Guild conference, but also giving up their time today um, to share with us the work that they've been doing on some, some pretty interesting projects. So just by way of housekeeping, uh, there will be time for Q&A after each of the sessions. Um, and if we don't get all the questions answered during, during the session itself, we will put them to the presenters and we will follow up and share the responses with them later on. So first up, we've got Dave McDonald from Radius Systems. And David is following up on a webinar that he, he conducted last summer about a pipeline rehabilitation project that Radius carried out with the Clancy Group for Southwest, Southeast Water, I beg your pardon. Um, so over to you, David. I think I'm still muted. No, I can hear you. All right, we're good. I will. You're good to go. I'll share the screen, and hopefully, everybody should be looking at the title slide, which is a project that we did for, as Jason mentioned, for the Clancy Group with Southeast Water. And I would like to thank those two companies for their involvement in this project and putting together this uh, these few slides on, on on what we actually did. So the technique that we're, I'm going to talk about today, which doesn't appear to be working at the minute, so there we go, is one of the techniques within the Subterra brand of pipeline rehabilitation. And this technique is the roll down technique where we are taking a structural pipe and inserting it through a host main as a size for size replacement or liner to the host main. So we will take a standard diameter polyethylene pipe of standard SDR with standard resins and uh, made as normal pipe, which is then pushed through a series of rollers for a then traditional type of slip line insertion within the host main. Now the host main will have been cleaned down to a bright metal and we'd have sent a camera up to have a look and make sure that any protrusions are out of the way before we go ahead with the insertion. Once we've got the pipe through we will then use standard type of equipment for pipe expansion to revert the pipe ends back to a standard size to fit flanges to allow us now to fill the pipe with water and pressurize and revert the pipe to a close fit liner within the host main. So that's the technique that was employed on this project down in the uh, in at Tower Road for, for this job for Clancy's and Southeast Water. And as you can see from the video, you are left then with a brand new polyethylene pipe to replace the aging asset. So I've done a quick um, features and benefits. Um, on the left hand side, you're using, on this particular technique, we're using standard PE pipes with standard SDR ratings and resins. And what that gives you is a 100 year plus life expectancy of the pipe. The pipes work at full design pressure up to 16 bar. They're fully structural, so the horse main is expendable. Many of these products come from stock, 100 millimeter through to 500 millimeter OD. And it can resolve leakage and water quality issues within the new common performance commitments or CPCs for the AMP 7 period. So pipes that are consistently leaking or suffer from consistent water quality, inserting a new polyethylene pipe inside the host main will address some of those CPCs. Butt welded joints, so the integrity of the pipe system is without question. Smooth internal bore, so you've got an improved flow. It is a no dig technique. 
So again, you will have less disruption. And again, that will impact on your CMEX scores because your CMEX scores this time around not only include things that happen with water delivery, it can also impact on the roadworks around an environment that, that uh, water customers can complain about and impact on a CMEX score. It is a close fit liner. It can be a size for size and in most cases, a size for size replacement. When the pipe has been reversed, you're using standard electrofusion fittings with the pipe expansion tools or standard tapping tees, which are range rated, can be used for service connections. Larger connections can be done using the minimus branch saddles that, that we do. So the project that we were involved with is the replacement of the section of pipe in red. And on this section, what we're looking at to, from position A to B and B to C was a six inch cast iron main, which was very badly corroded and uh, encrusted with um, residues inside the pipe, which uh, needed a size for size liner. The section down from there from C to D and on the original plans for across from D to E and then down to F from the reservoirs um, was an eight inch pipe but we continued round with a 160 millimeter pipe all the way through. So we had three or four launch received pits. We had position B uh, around position C for the second launch pit. And the actual route eventually continued a bit further down the main road before turning across. And what, what was so important about this project was obviously relining a pipe. If you can pick out from those uh, those blocks on the uh, on the plan are all houses with very large and expansive gardens with a lot of well-developed trees, which an open cut method was just not an option. And then when we got through to the wooded area between E and F, that was again, very overgrown, very wooded area. And it just lent itself to a, an insertion rather than an open cut job. So, the launch and receive um, pits were located in Tower Road at the junction with Tilford Road where the six inch became the eight inch pipe. And then we had another launch and receive pit opposite the parade of shops on Tilford Road. Now, as you can see, the equipment that we're using for the roll down, it doesn't, it isn't a huge and massive piece of kit when we're launching these uh, pipes inside the four inch or the six inch or the eight inch or the 10 inch. We're taking up the usual around amount of room that a, a, a roadworks will take up when we're looking to insert a new pipe inside an old. So we're not having to close whole roadways down. We're just compressing the, the, the amount of space needed to get the equipment in to make the job as clean and tidy as possible. As I mentioned, we have to clean the pipe. And on this particular one, there had been a couple of previous attempts to clean the horse main but we found using this drag scraper was the most suitable method to clean out all the, uh, the buildup of, um, of crud over the years to clean it down before we were able to get our new pipe inside. And as I mentioned, with any of our lining technologies, a CCTV survey then was done, but the cleaning of the CCTV has to be done to make sure that the pipe is going to go where it wants it to do, go, and there isn't any unmarked uh, changes in direction uh, because this system it will need navigate around 11 and a quarters possibly 22 and a halves but anything greater would have to be then dug out um, for a, uh, a an elbow to be fitted this is a google earth image of the route from the parade of shops which which shows the heavily wooded area and the back of these probably, you know, well-to-do houses where people lived and didn't want the disruption of having to try and open cut through the back of their gardens and the wooded areas. And so the technique used really did save a huge amount of time and effort in getting the pipe work through the existing main. And that will now sit there, as I say, for at least the next hundred years or more just doing what it was designed to do. 
this photograph just highlights some of the uh, the challenges that we had to overcome, which were that obviously you can see how well developed some of these tree areas are, and the the tractor here is actually right at the back of one of the fences of one of the gardens, having to get in uh, to to work in the area. So the open cut was was just not an option for this particular uh, particular project. So what we were looking at. There was 900 metres of badly encrusted raw water main from a borehole to a service reservoir. It was a mixture of traffic sensitive carriageways and private land. 550 metres of this was 8 inch cast iron, 350 metres of 6 inch. Cleaned as I mentioned and inserted using a 160 SDR 17 which is a 10 bar rated blue PE 100 12 metre sticks that will be an off-the-shelf product for radius systems. That is standard kit. Any joints that were made, standard electrofusion jointing. We had a radius subterra team there of Graham and Steve, and we engaged with a company called White's Utilities, and they had a three-man team there working with us. This was a re the reason behind this was that last year we were very busy because a lot of work kicked off because of COVID, believe it or not, that we were inundated with people saying can you do this now while we've got access to this road or that road so we were engaging with some of our, our, our competent contractors that we work with and whites helped us on this the project was completed within six weeks and this was a week earlier than the traffic management plan so good planning the right job and we delivered it a week earlier and the project was managed from tony pike from our side at Blandford office and Clancy Doctor had uh, Steve White on site working with us throughout the project. We have a case study on this that I can circulate round which shows you know what we did as a, clear, a close fit lining technique which resolved a problem main and this is what we've said to a number of people now this system and some of the other systems they might not solve all the problems that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis of water main rehabilitation. But when it does, when these roll down techniques or the pipe folded technique that we offer, when these techniques work, they work much, much better than anything else that can be suggested. So what we're saying to people, as Clancy's did and Southeast Water, send us over your problem mains let give us the problem because the worst thing that could happen is we'll say sorry that is something that we can't do but if we can the solution that we can come up with is a pipeline that will last well over 100 years so you're putting something in the ground that's going to last the test of time if it sits there and works at the pressure and the temperatures and everything that that particular pipe was designed to do. And just as a closing comment, um, we also did 960 meters of 315 PE21 uh, gas main inside a 12 inch aging cast iron for SGN. So, and again, this particular solution for SGN a pipe inside a pipe as a close fit liner for a size for size replacement it fitted the bill what they needed to do better than anything else that had been proposed and that is the end of my short presentation on what we did last summer thanks david well that was a fascinating insight into your project um, just waiting to see if we've got any questions coming through. But just whilst we do, um, you did sort of answer the question I was going to ask you, but I'd just be interested to get you to expand on that a little bit. So, obviously, I work for Seven Trent. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking about so you, you described how the maximum radiuses or bends that you could go around were up to 22 and a half degrees. If it's a slow radius. Yeah. Um, just, just, type. Yeah. So I was I was interested to know when you were planning out your project, 
what sort of risk allowance did you put in for um, for unexpected changes of direction that you might have then had to excavate and um, and join up on a on a manual basis because you yeah you shared the success that you finished the project a week earlier than than you were anticipating. Well, the CCTV survey would have identified any changes of direction that we weren't aware of from the plans. So in that, we, we were almost aware of what we were dealing with before we set off with the plan of, the, of what we were going to do in changes of directions and where the, the excavations needed to be for the launch and receive pits then to, to piece those things up. So correct planning through the CCTV survey and the plans that are issued out by the water company are really the only ways that we've got to mitigate against any any bends that we come across. But you're right, if, if there was a bend that we suddenly come across, then we really haven't got an option but to actually excavate in that area and create a new launch and receive area, which will then just be a case of pipe coming in um, and pipe going out. So I, I see I see what you mean. It, it can be quite challenging, but it is all at the front end in the preparation to make sure that all changes of direction have been accounted for. And if 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 we've done that correctly at the front end, then we shouldn't be tripped up when we actually start to come with the push and get the pipe through before we then do the reversion for the uh, on the on the system. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, yes. Somebody can just keep me in check on time please, because we've had some questions come through. Okay. So the first question that we've had, David, is, is there any damage caused to the outside of the PE pipe as pull pushed through the hose pipe? Because, again, the pipe work itself, the, the horse main will have been cleaned down to a bright metal, and any protrusions from existing... Um, uh, uh, feral tappings will have been removed by the scraping and cleaning the possibility of damage to the host main will have been removed by that cleaning process now there's no 100 percent guarantee that something hasn't happened but as we pressurize these pipes back up to 19 bar as the reversion process and if it's a 16 bar pipe we would be expecting to pressure pressure test it to 24 bar then there are there is a, the, the pressure testing of the system occurs after we've done our insertion but any kind of slip lining technique if you haven't cleaned that pipe down to bright metal and got down to a a, a quality internal surface for the horse main then you will potentially um you could damage a pipe but that all comes from cleaning and the cctv survey which will pick up, and, and the CCTV surveys that we have, they are very, very good quality, high resolution, so you can actually see if there is anything that um, is there to be worried about. So the answer is potentially yes, but if you mitigate at the front and get out all the problems at the front, then, then you should not damage the pipe as you go through. Okay, lovely, thank you. We're okay for time, okay. Yes, sorry, I was just messaging you. Yes, after the next question, yeah. Okay, so um, we've got another question that says, what is the difference with uh, slip lining technique? Can I do under pressure connections? Any problems when with fittings when I join to a standard PE pipe? None whatsoever. The, the electrofusion top tees for making service connections are range rated. So when we have diameter reduced the pipe, we go down approximately 10%. When we do the re reversion process to become a close fit liner, all the pipes we use being standard PE pipes, diameters, i.e. 160s, 250s, the range of top tees will fit the new modified OD of the new pipe that's been inserted. For making pipe-to-pipe -pipe connections, obviously the new pipe that comes through, as you saw when the, when the pipe comes out at the, at the host main, there is standard pipe expansion equipment, which involves literally putting a, 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 a piece of equipment into the pipe, 
expanding it back out, putting an insert in to support the pipe wall, and then you've they've then reversed that pipe back to standard OD for standard electrofusion jointing. So standard equipment is used for jointing these pipes, and that's what gives it its integrity and gives it the full pressure rating and life expectancy. Okay, lovely. Thanks, David. Right. So we do have another couple of questions, but what we'll do is we'll get responses to those after the um, after the session, if that's okay with everybody. We won't we won't forget about them. We'll get those to you. Okay. Okay. So thanks again, David, and to Radio Systems for sharing your valuable time with us. Really much appreciated. Okay. Um, so next up, we have Leon Woods from Amiblue, and Leon's going to share a case study on the improvement work carried out with Mott McDonald Bentley at the Preston Wastewater Treatment Works. Again, we'll do the Q&A after the presentation. So if I can hand over to you, Leon, take it away. Thank you. If I get this right now, Dave, well done. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> okay, hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, is that okay with you, Jason? Can you just see the full Amy Blue title? I can't at the moment. I can see a list of names. Ah, oh, it shouldn't be doing that. Now we tested this earlier. Let's try this one. Uh, that's doing something. That's looking there we go. Yep, yeah, you're good How's to go. How's that? Okay. Good to Screens go. have changed over. I've been in a different Zoom meeting this morning, so my apologies, everyone. So right. Oh, I'm just going to close that. So yeah, um, briefly, I'm Leon Woods, a technical sales manager for Ami Bloom here in the UK. Um, and uh, I just want to introduce um, some of the, uh, well, the company and some of the projects um, that we do, and then we'll go on to a brief um, outline on the, uh, the Preston Wastewater uh, Treatment Works. Um, so I'll just explain to you a little bit about what's available. Um, so, um, our business um, was um, started in the 1950s by uh, Hobas in Switzerland and 10 years later uh, Flowtite came along. Um, these are two different manufacturing processes but both in GRP. So Hobas manufacture um, within a cylinder, uh, they manufacture GRP pipes and the flow type methodology is to manufacture pipes on the external of the cylinder, the filament wound. And it's the filament mound that we'll be looking at today because we really could make a, um, a, a long presentation on this, looking at both, um, uh, both sets. Um, so those companies worked separately for a long time. And in 2017, uh, they joined forces and became AmiBlue. So Ami Blue now, as the, as the umbrella company, um, has a history going back to the 1950s. Um, and, and since the 1950s, GRP really has gained a firm foothold in the construction of pipelines. Um, and we, we manufacture pipelines for all of those um, pictures that you can see on the screen, uh, all of those applications. So sewer, stormwater, non-circular pipe rehabilitation, hydropower, potable industrial um, applications and such like. And why use GRP? Well, our systems are manufactured to give um, 150 years life expectancy. Um, they don't corrode. So like you heard with uh, Dave's presentation earlier, um, their systems are there to, to reline and replace um, corroded pipe and so are GRP pipes as well. So um, horses for courses uh, for the small diameters, obviously that, that was a great system that Dave presented on and um, we can use our pipes in similar situations for the larger diameter projects and also to replace large diameter and pressure pipelines on hydro schemes, which is the photo that you can see on your screen right now. And GRP doesn't, uh, doesn't corrode over time and um, is non-abrasive um, internally as well. So you don't have that, um, those issues. So the pipes that we manufacture on the, the flow type, the filament wound, which are our pressure systems, um, they're really um, 
they're manufactured as a structural sandwich using a, um, a really, really smooth liner, uh, using different types of glass, glass fibers, both chopped and filament wound, um, to create a really high um, hoop stress um, from internal pressure, which is why they're used um, a lot with pressure systems. And we manufacture up to a 32 bar rated um, pipe and up to four meters in diameter. So um, a, a lot of uh, scope there for, um, for a lot of different projects. And the pr pressure applications that we, we do work with, um, the bottom photo there is a desalination plant, um, but cooling systems, um, industrial stormwater, uh, we really are experts in hydro energy projects, um, seawater intakes and outfalls, and, uh, and we do a lot of pressure work uh, throughout the world um, with all of our systems. And, uh, and some in the UK, which moves us on to the uh, Preston uh, Wastewater Treatment Works. It's not a project that I worked on, but Kevin Jefferson, my, um, my colleague, and um, uh, the guys from, uh, some of the guys from Mott McDonald might be um, listening in and might jump in as well at the end if you have any questions. Um, so hopefully we have Chris Taylor somewhere there in the, in the audience um, and, and maybe some of the other guys. Uh, so I've taken some information from the, uh, the case study to show you. So during AMP6, United Utilities um, were investing a, um, £20 million into Preston Wastewater Treatment Works to, prevent, to uh, improve the um, performance of the, um, the site. So the scope of works, as you can see on the screen, were new storm tanks um, to give a, a combined capacity of uh, 51,000 cubic meters. Um, they needed the flow works, um, flow to works measurements improving and just everything needed improving on this site. It was, uh, it was getting a bit um, worn. Um, and in, so in 2018, uh, the project was awarded to Mark McDonald Bentley with the objectives to reduce the stormwater spills and improve the, um, the underperforming inlet works and primary um, set settlement stage. All of the inflows to the wastewater treatment works were pumped and uh, the catchment generated high concentrations of screenings, particularly during the storms after long periods. So this was resulting in the inlet work struggling to deal with uh, the peak screening loads. Part of the solution um, was flow tight GRP biaxial and pressure pipes um, were chosen um, in the whole mix of the, the project um, to achieve the project's objectives. I hope I'm not speaking too fast for you all. Um, so the main solution was to construct a new storm storage tank uh, with a capacity of 51,000 cubic meters, comprising two compartments utilizing the, uh, the same fill um, and empty pipe work for the majority of the pipeline. Uh, Ami Blue um, supplied 500 and, 530 meters of pipe um, for a pipeline to transfer the screened and degritted stormwater from the inlet works to the new storm tanks during storm events. Um, and when the storm tanks reached capacity, this pipeline then provides an additional 800 cubic meters of storage um, before the existing storm uh, tanks filled. So all very useful stuff. So we supplied um, flow type PN6 or six bar pressure rated pipes um, and we supplied their 1200 mil um, diameter pipes, a mix of 1200 and 1400 mil diameter pipes. One of the pipe runs um, connects to the existing stormwater um, return pump. So once the storm flows um, cease, the pipeline transfers this stormwater into the storm return pumping station. Um, with traditional pressure pipe systems um, with unbalanced and axial thrust forces uh, need support um, by thrust blocks. But by using um, flow tights by axial pipes and locking joints, they didn't need to use the thrust blocks um, on this project. So 
So the quote from site um, from Jonathan Edwards, who's um, uh, who was the contracts manager from um, Mott McDonald Bentley. Um, he, he actually said choosing the GRP pipe solution provided significant material cost savings um, comparing to the alternative with ductile iron. And there are various other savings um, to be made, not just cost savings. So with reducing the need for the thrust blocks on site, you're obviously reducing um, the need for as much concrete. Um, taking that away you've got a carbon saving you've got a time saving on program you haven't got to wait for any uh, any concrete to be set in and curing um you're taking away wet trades as well so again a time and a labor um saving um with using the biaxial pipes and the the lock joint to absorb the um actual force the actual forces um it just reduced all of that um, that need um, where the the changes in direction were uh, were taking place. So um, yeah, so savings all around. So that was basically a, a real quick run through um, of the uh, the project. I'm sure um, there's there's lots more to say on it. Um, but just running through some of the environmental um, bonuses of using uh, GRP, obviously the, the materials are, are made and manufactured to last um, 150 years, as I said earlier. All of our materials are recyclable at end of use, um, although none of us have been around for the 150 years to see that happening, but obviously we do with our waste and um, recycle it uh, into cement works and such like. Um, our pipes are supplied in longer lengths than concrete, so from um, invariables from one meter up to 12 meters, but generally with the pressure pipes, six meter, 12 meters, and 18 meters in some cases are available. Um, and all of our factories are, are really um, geared up for low energy production, so we're saving on our carbon for the whole company and where we can nest the pipes for logistics, uh, we can save on logistics also um, with uh, the amount of pipes that we're, we're bringing in on one truck. Um, so that's me. I was, uh, was worried I had too many slides and um, was gonna go over the, the time. So I think I've, uh, I've completed within the time there. So hopefully that's um, been of use to you. Thanks Leon, yeah, definitely. A real whistle stop tour. You overcame the technological difficulty at the start. I did. <laughs> I can't believe it did that because we did do a test run earlier and it was perfect. Are you, are you okay to take a couple of questions? Yeah, of course. Okay, well I'm selfishly as the host, I'm going to ask mine first. So I noticed on one of your presentations um, you'd refer to potable water. I just wondered yes. if Thank you. Um, we're able, you were able to expand on on that because obviously it's a it's a, a controlled material of which water companies need to be confident of its um, of its suitability for, for drinking water purposes. Yes, yes. So throughout Europe and in fact globally, um, we hold potable water certificates um, for our systems. And uh, we have two final countries to um, to finish the uh, uh, the certificates and the UK is one and France being the other and both are running simultaneously right now. Uh, Kevin Jefferson, my colleague who is, 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 is here in the ether somewhere, um, he's been working with uh, the, um, the DWI and we will have, we hope, um, all being well, um, our possible certifications, our DW1, DWI Reg 31 um, compliance for the summer this year. There has been a bit of a delay because of the COVID situation. So labs have been taken up, obviously the DWI um, and, and DEFRA and such like, they've, you know, they've had other things to concentrate on. So, um, but we're hoping now um, that it should all be finalised by the summer of this year and, uh, and we're good to go then with all new potable contracts and all new clean water contracts. So we're quite excited about that. Okay, lovely, thank you. Thank you. Um, questions that we've had. Um, 
are the pipes cheaper than Wheelite Spyro of equivalent size? Bit of a challenging question. You, it you is a me? challenging question. Um, Sorry, I was just saying, Leon, do you want me to come in on that one? Yes, please, because I'm just trying to change my, my um, screen share over here. So okay. I'm just trying to stop and share so I can see you all. That's it. There we go. Okay. And just in respect of that, uh, the pipes, obviously, we have to bring them in from the continent. But as Leon mentioned, one of the advantages of that we do that is different diameters on, on attenuation systems and things like that. Uh, we can nest diameters to reduce the transport cost and probably make the, the pipes a bit more competitive. Also, the issue of stiffness is a thing where, um, although again in the presentation we say we can do it to two and a half thousand stiffness, we tend to promote basically five thousand stiffness upwards in the UK. And again, the jointing system is obviously a push fit jointed system, as opposed with something like Whale 8, where I know they can use large diameter band seals and uh, obviously welding, which I think they're maybe moving away from a little bit with the health and safety issues of guys going up inside pipes to weld. But we're not in the market of knocking competitors. It's horses for courses again, some that application. And it's one of these things. If a client gives us the opportunity to price it, then we'll do so and we'll sell it on the merits and the benefits of the system. Okay. Appreciate the fact that that was a tactful response as well, because it's obviously not a it's not an easy question to answer. Okay. Yeah. No, and there are there are market forces at, you know at large at the minute. So you know, it, it could well be that we're on a like for like pricing or, or slightly lower in some cases as well. It depends on the diameter. It depends on the, the application that we're working on. So it, it really is on a project by project basis. Yeah. So give us a go and, uh, and we'll happily look at that for you. Okay, understood. Um, next question. Are there any special considerations when joining GRP pipe to carbon steel pipe and how is this done? Again, Leon, do you want me to answer that one? Yeah, you carry on with that one. I have my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, again, it's not a problem. Uh, there are a, a range of um, manufacturers out there, uh, names obviously Viking Johnson, MaxiFits, uh, TK and companies like that who can offer alternative materials uh, to, to adapt onto it. Basically, they need to know the outside diameter of the GRP and then obviously the outside diameter of the connecting carbon steel. Again, a range of flange adapters that are preparatory and they're available out in the market. So there's not an issue with joining to other materials. Okay, uh, are we doing for Hi. time, Kate? Sorry, yeah, we're good. We're good? Okay, so um, we've got, what joining system is used for slip lining? Okay, so that's me, I guess. Um, I, I do a lot of work. I'm actually on the UK STT Council as well, so I do a lot of work with the relining. Um, so we use a flush line, a flush inline joint in general, um, so that we don't have any snagging um, within the host pipe. So it'll either be a steel or a GRP sleeve that fits in line and flush with the pipe and all for push fit. Um, and again, that can be gravity or pressure system. Okay, thank you. Was, was um, that Norman? It, how did you guess? <laughs> I think I've seen it pop up on my screen. <laughs> um, so a couple of other questions we've had. Where are the pipes manufactured? Okay, so um, we have several manufacturing um, plants. Um, Kevin and I use two plants in Germany, two in Poland, one in Spain and one in Bulgaria. Uh, we've just had a new plant come on um, that we've um, invested in in Morocco. And we also, um, as a company, as the, as the greater company, um, we have the USA and South America also. Then we have 44 licensed manufacturing partners around the world. So we have access to other plants should we need them. Okay. Um, it would be nice to see one here in the UK. Uh, we haven't got that one yet, um, but our closest is Germany. That pretty much covers all bases, I think. Yeah. Um, so here's a challenging question. Um, GRP pipes have had a bad reputation for being brittle in the past. Are they now better? I'll, yes. I'll, come in and, I'll, I'll come in on that one, but you're right. Back on. You're, oh, we're, <laughs> we're very passionate about this question, so thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, thanks for whoever raised it. Um, yeah, there, there has been some, uh, dare I say, there were past history of GRP pipes being um, 
in the market being brittle. I think in the early days, a lot of the applications were installed using a pipe with a two and a half thousand stiffness. And as it was one of the first sort of lightweight pipeline materials, a lot of them were used for applications where quite honestly, they shouldn't have been used. Uh, and again, the other issue has been possibly site um, uh, you know, supervision aspect. You know, if there hasn't been the supervision, say from the client, and I'm not accusing any contractors here, but they maybe haven't followed the guidelines that were issued uh, on how the pipe should be installed. So there were some issues with it and quality in the early days as well, but we've well overcome that. The technology of the GRP pipe that's out there in the market now is far, far superior to anything that was produced, dare I say, 25, 30 years ago. But after saying that, there are a lot of pipelines which are still in service 30, 35 years and performing as good as the day they went in. So the support we now give is on any project, we will always visit it, go every through all steps of the project, project manager, all the way down to nominated contractor. We go on site to investigate, make sure it's being done right. And we're only a phone call away. If anybody needs any technical assistance or concerns, considerations, they just get in touch with us and we can reassure them of the quality of the pipe these days. It's far superior to the past. Okay, lovely. I think that um, more than adequately demonstrates the, uh, the solution to the concerns that were raised by that question. So um, that's the last question that we've got for you guys at Ami Blue. Um, I just wondered if, if we, if you don't mind, can we go back to Dave and ask a question that we had from before, if if that's okay? Unless there's anything yeah, else you wanted to add finally. Fine with that. Okay. No, no. Okay. Just so be thank, delighted to hear from everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you both for sharing your valuable time with us. Thank you. Much appreciated. So Dave, sorry, we're going to put you back on the spot momentarily. No problem. Um, we had here, what considerations do you need to be aware of when pressure testing a PE inside a host pipe? Right, well that, that is obviously a very good question. It was raised um, as part of one of the jobs we did a couple of summers ago where we were inserting a pipe under a railway or network rail in the West Coast main line uh, where they had a 12 inch cast iron main and they were obviously concerned that if we were pressurizing a pipe inside that pipe were we going to disturb anything underneath the railway. Obviously as part and parcel of the preparation of the job there was an under pressure connection made for testing to make sure that the pipe was a, the correct pipe and was running at the pressures we were expecting before it was then taken out of service and gapped. So we will always have a coupon which will give us the condition of the pipe which we can then do some analysis on to see if there's going to be any issue in pressurising that pipe inside the host main. So there is a process we will go through as part of the preparatory work to say, is the pipe in condition to accept a pressure test with the pipe with inside the pipe? So it is all part of the preparatory work, but in, in general rule, these, these, these host mains will perfectly cope with the, the pressurization of the pipe because we're only actually going to be expanding it back up to its original size anyway. So any, anything that happens is going to be minimal when we when we reverse the uh, we reverse the pipe towards its original original outside diameter. Okay, um, and that actually just sort of following on from that question, um, there was a question about how long does the PE stay in the reduced diameter before reverting naturally? It it has to be reversed. It it doesn't revert naturally it will stay as a reduced diameter pipe until the reversion process of introducing pressurized water to, to revert it back towards its original state. We did have a, a project with um, Northern Gas uh, where they were actually wanted us for their, uh, some of their works where they wanted us to produce coils of 160 mil so that they could do their own insertion for replacement of six inch cast iron mains size for size but they didn't want to take out the roll down kit 
the big machinery to every job. So as the pipes were extruded in the factory, they were then rolled down and coiled as uh, 144 millimeter OD pre-rolled gas pipes. These were then shipped out to the northern gas areas. They would then take them out as they would do on a coil trailer, insert inside six inch, use their own reversion kits. And the, the, I think there was pipes that were left there probably throughout a summer period and they hadn't moved about one millimeter. Some of the pipes had moved about one millimeter in, in, in expansion back out towards, but that was through a warm summer as well where if you're going to expect any sort of reversion naturally, that you would expect it through a, a warm period with polyethylene uh, reacting to, to temperature. Um, but as a rule, no, the pipe will stay modified until it's reversed back through pressurization. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Okay. So um, you both described your case studies. So we'll, um, if, if, you, if you're both okay, um, we will share those out with the members as we said we would do, which is yeah. fantastic. Thank you for um, fielding some pretty challenging questions that our members have sent over to you. That was, that was really good. Um, I hope everybody has enjoyed the session. And um, don't forget to share with your, your colleagues and your friends that the um, webinar will be available on the Guild, Guild YouTube channel because um, it's been recorded. So if you have missed it, you'll be able to catch up on it later. Um, so just a quick reminder that the next Meet Our Members session is on the 30th of March. That one's hosted by Westwood Pipes and Jay Murphy and Sons. So if you check back onto the Guild website for details on that. Um, and the final thing for me is don't forget the national dinner is on the 8th of March, 2022. I am really, really, really looking forward to seeing you all there. I need something to look forward to, and that yeah. is the thing I'm looking forward to. So thanks, everybody, for your, for your time. Um, thanks again to the presenters for their time. It's been a really interesting session. Have a safe afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks again. I'll see you all on the next event. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. 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 Than